Okay, preferably maybe not this camp. Maybe we try to find them on their own. I think there are some on the other side of these buildings here. Let's go off into the woods a little bit and see. William, hello. Nixta, welcome to the stream. Rapa goes, hello, welcome, man. Lael, Stephen, hello. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Well, that's one way to pull him. We'll just body pull him. That's smart, right? Christy, Jason, welcome. Hope y'all are having a good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever it is where you're at. Harry, hello. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, too, can you ask if I'm being affected here by the air pollution from Canada's wildfires? Uh, not that I know of. I live in southeastern Michigan. It, it's possible, but I don't watch a lot of news. I can't really subject myself to it. So I really don't know if I am. I know the air quality here. When I check the weather, the air quality has been low. Uh, you know, it's bad. It's bad air quality, but uh, that's not atypical for this time of year where I'm at. Usually I know I'm being affected by someone else's wildfires when, like, the sky is really, really hazy in the morning and in the evening, and it, it hasn't really been like that, so I'm not sure. Mike says, if you had smoke, you'd know. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I usually, when I've been affected by it before, like last year we had those ones that kind of moved across the country. And when those came through, I definitely could notice in the morning the sun would be like blood red because of all the haze and the smoke in the air. So that I noticed, and I haven't noticed anything this time. And I'm usually at least outside in the, in the afternoon and evening for a little bit, so... I mean, Christy, you're, you guys aren't you guys aren't sending the smoke down here. You know, I mean, it's coming down here, but you know, yeah, it's. <laughs> I think it's not intentional. Yeah, it, it, it's obviously so much worse, you know, that you're up there and having to live through it. Oh, Tuka, New York's air quality is the worst in recorded history. I mean, yeah, I believe that. As far as like a sustainable biosphere, the Earth is going to complete pot, so doesn't really surprise me. It, it turns out there's consequences of a uh, of hundred years of pumping CO2 into the atmosphere. You know, it turns out there's actual consequences to shit like that. Who, who would have thought? Leonardo, hello. Thanks for coming by. Christy says, I wouldn't be Canadian if I didn't apologize for something that wasn't my fault. <laughs> right on. That's fair. Joe, the Goomba update is that right now when I'm streaming, unfortunately, Goomba's kind of banned from the basement. We're working on a resolution so that he can come down and just kind of be in my office, but he can't, he can't have free range of the rest of the basement anymore because he keeps finding stuff to get in, into and in at because he is little, so he sees life on like the micro scale. 
Which means that he finds stuff that we miss. Uh, and it's just gotten to a point where I can't trust him. I don't want him to get himself in trouble or eat something that he shouldn't. And I, I have a feeling he likes going into the dark parts of the basement to hunt bugs. Which is pr a protein source, but with some of the furry spiders I've seen, he might bite off more than he can chew, literally and figuratively. JC, Whitney, hello. Welcome, guys. Yeah, Joey's not, like, totally destructive, but, like, let's say he finds, like, a foamy toy or, like, a kid's toy on the ground or something, and no one's around, and it's plasticky and kind of looks like his toys. Yes, he's chewed up a couple things that we have left out that just shouldn't have been left on the ground. Totally our fault, you know. It's not his fault that stuff is left out for him to chew on. Everything could be neatly packed away and very much more orderly, and then there would probably not be the same temptations. Do I run from this? Or do I heal through it? I think we can heal through it. We, we don't have a lot of mana though, that being said. Let's go ahead and heal through it. JC, thanks for asking. He's, he's still feeling like crap. Yeah, we, we've got at least one more day, maybe two more days of just absolute garbage to get through before I think we're in the clear. But we'll get in the clear eventually. I'm going to pop this potion. I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. Jay, good evening, man. Welcome to the stream. I appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough few days for the household, for the Rambles household. <laughs> Today might have been the worst, though. I, I think after today, I'm uh, optimistic that maybe things get better. Maybe. Johnny Hoover, welcome, man. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, it's a it's a late afternoon, early evening stream because the the daytime had to be for rest and some chores, but mainly mainly rest. Wood red mud, thanks for being here. I hope you guys you guys seem like you're really digging the camp. Yeah, it sounds like a little bit of glamping too to have a you get to have the big TV and stuff. That's super cool. I need to do some glamping. We're we're planning like a tent camping trip, but. I'm not super excited about sleeping in a tent. And I think for like the far flung future, glamping is the way to go. In some kind of sturdy, hard shelled enclosure. Preferably of the mobile sort. Something like that. In the UK, you call them caravans? Right on. Um, we have a few names for them. RVs, tra trailers, campers. Uh, it depends on like the make, model, and design of what it is, depending which will be what it's called. I've also seen like cool tents that like you mount a tent kind of on top of your car, and then you, it like expands up into a tent. And then at least that way, you're, you're not on the ground. I thought those were kind of cool. Not exactly glamping. It's, it's like tent camping, but on top of your car. Or over like the bed of your truck. And that seemed like pretty interesting for something that was like a novel idea of how to tent camp.
My mic's muted, yeah. It happens sometimes. I like to ride the mute. What I was saying is that now is a good time to sub to Classic. Steven, you, if you want to resub now and play Hardcore, it's a really great, great time for it. So... It might be a keyboard issue, actually, because <laughs> now I'm not hitting mute and I, I'm still getting muted. I'm going to watch it for a second here and we'll see if maybe I need to swap my keyboard out. Uh, I've been riding the same keyboard forever and it's it's an old keyboard that I like a lot and I need to replace it, but I, I haven't yet. If it gets me killed, though, I'm going to replace it right now today. Because, yeah, something weird's going on with my with the key I have bound to my mute, which probably means imminent hardware failure of the worst variety in the worst possible situation. So if I start clicking my abilities for a minute, you'll, you'll know why. It'll be because a keyboard swap is happening. I, I have my other rig over behind me that I can, I can swap it out, but I'd rather not. I had to expel some gas. I, I do that without muting men, just so you know. Oh God, these guys are running, which means stitches somewhere. Oh, look at that. Okay, let's mark this guy. And let's get off, get off the road. All right, the keyboard seems to be playing nicely for the time being. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it go muted again. Keeping my eye on it. Yeah, I probably need to take all my keys off, completely take all of my keys off, thoroughly clean it, and then maybe I'd stop, ha I feel like some of my keys stick, so my, my seven key sticks for sure. Uh, and I think the problem is I have my mute bound to five, and I think my five key is starting to stick. I think that's what's happening. So it's like, it double taps. So if I tap to unmute, it just double taps, it, it remutes. So that could be what's happening, because that already happens with my seven key. Maybe Maybe taking it all apart and really giving it a thorough clean would be good because like it's clean where you can see it because you know I can get at those parts but I'm kind of thinking that maybe after several years of use uh, I do need to do something more thorough with it it could be better than just flat out replacing it because I, I like this keyboard a lot and I really have no desire to learn the feel of a new keyboard it's gonna be weird I don't need the distraction I already have uh, enough distractions in hardcore without having to learn a new keyboard Steven, water on the keyboard? Are we talking about cleaning the keyboard with water? Like pouring water through it? I don't think so. I have a mechanical keyboard. And uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, maybe if you cleaned it that way, like sprayed it out viciously with a hose, but then let it dry for like 48 hours, 72 hours before plugging it back in, maybe then any electronic components would be like completely dried out. You'd probably be fine. But I think if you plugged it in before that, you'd probably be... Uh, ready to kill your keyboard distractions no not me impossible Johnny Hoover if you need a gaming mouse try to get one of the Logitech G600 MMO gaming mice before you can't find them anymore someone let us know that they have been discontinued but you can still find them on Amazon where I'm at for like 30 or 40 bucks so if you need a good MMO mouse Logitech G600 get one while you can because apparently they've been discontinued. And, and I don't know if there's like a newer equivalent of it. I don't see one when I, when I search. Dominic, I appreciate that. Welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for being here. Patrick, I'm doing okay. How are you doing? Uh, oh, we, we stand here long enough, we just get a respawn right in front of us, so that works. We don't need this guy, but still.
Yeah, Mike, I, I think I've seen the number pad thing you're talking about. I don't I don't like that. Yeah, how they like kinda have the whole numpad on the mouse thing. I, I don't I don't like it I don't like that, I don't think. I don't think that's an option for me. I have, I'm gonna buy like six more of these mice before I can't find them anymore, and I'm just gonna have them in a closet. And so I hope, like, if they can each last five years, you know, that's that's probably that's that's a long time. I, that's that might be all that I need. But I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. I've never really liked Razor stuff. I've always been a Logitech person. I, I don't really know why. Some of their stuff is kind of like physically over designed. I feel like. It tries to be like really cool looking and some of it looks edgy. Um, and I, I like my stuff to look kind of plain because I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a boring person. And I like my, my gear to reflect that. Mr. Wheels says I could never do hardcore. I don't have the reflexes to play that way. Um, I think I'm like a very mediocre WoW player when it comes to like actual skill. Like I have a lot of knowledge of stuff like the right way things should be done, what I should do, but as far as like my execution I feel like it's pretty mediocre. As you can see right here we just got back attacked because my camera was not out far enough. This could have easily killed us had we been really low on, it, uh, had we been low or had not, not had a bubble just now. So as you can see like I don't have the greatest habits and stuff but I feel like it's a matter of practice and, and just going slow. Especially when you're starting off in hardcore, just take 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 your time with the journey. If you feel like you're putting yourself at risk too much, just find an area with non-aggressive mobs and just grind on them for a bit. Alley Cats asked, "Do I do I know that I've been streaming for one week? Is it one week today? That that feels like too soon. I thought it was like five days. If it's been a week, that's awesome. I'm I'm really surprised in that case." Herb Johnson, welcome. Thanks for stopping by, man. Text here, because I don't know if the Razors are more childish. I, I didn't say childish, I just... They're more... I like stylized. They're more stylized, you know? They, they have a certain artistic flair about them that I, I totally get, like... Some people dig that. I, I just don't dig it. But I don't, I don't really know if they're childish, because a lot of it's expensive equipment. <laughs> when I think of childish stuff, I think of, like... You know, stuff that's made explicitly for kids that's a little bit cheaper, but I just think the, the Razors are just like a little bit more stylized. And so you, you kind of either go with Logitech or you go with Razor depending on like what your personal preference is with that. Mogram says grind level 2 hogs until max level. Yeah, no I mean, but you can grind like non-aggressive stuff that's like 3 levels under you and you could do that all you want and like it would be a hard journey. Not a hard journey, it'd be a long journey to get to max level. But there are achievement runs where people will not do quests, where they just grind mobs. And I find that interesting. I don't know if I would ever do something like that. I think to do a challenge run like that, if I had like a bunch of characters doing the normal run and we got them all to 60 and I was looking for just a different kind of challenge, maybe then, but... It's definitely doable. I'm done with the quest. Yeah, Mr. Wheels, I have a habit of just kind of like finishing a quest. And then I keep grinding in the area for a while, especially when I'm just kind of hanging out and talking to chat. Part of it's intentional, but a lot of it is just me not paying attention to the quest, so you're totally right. We are done, and I don't have to grind in such a dangerous area, to be fair. Steven, I'm not going to do any of the dungeons in this on this character. What I'm going to do is when we go to the official hardcore servers, we're going to start a guild. And then any of you guys who wants to do a run, I'll run with you guys, but I don't want to run with pugs. I, I have zero interest at this point in my life to run with pugs. Real life, do I vape? No. And if I did, I'd probably still say no to be completely transparent because I don't know how YouTube cares about things like that, so I probably just wouldn't talk about it if I did. <laughs> if I'm being totally honest. Antifin, take care, man. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you being here. Tactical War, yeah, the pugs again. Right, pugs. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> here he is. Don't watch chat when running into town. Sixes says, what faction will the guild be? I don't know right now. I will have details. Like, once we have a date, once Blizzard tells us when we can expect uh, the actual launch, then I will solidify the details. But right now, I don't know. Right now, I'm ambivalent. You know, I could go back and forth. 
Part of me says, you know, go Horde. I like Horde because we can do so many more dungeons so much more easily, starting with Rage Fire. You know, at like level 15 to 19, you can do Rage Fire. You have easy access to Wailing Caverns. You have easy access to SFK. You have easy access to all the Scar. Do you guys see a trend with the easy access to dungeons? And honestly, that's kind of what pulls me towards Horde. And if we went Horde, I could do a Shaman. And I, I, I've been thinking, you know, we thought about Priest and Warlock, but i kind of been thinking if I go Horde, I can do a Shaman. And how amazing would that be? So that's, that's what I've been thinking. Now, that could all change. It could change tomorrow. Be careful. And uh, but we'll solidify stuff once we have a date. Rush him. You got this. Yeah. No. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, they're they're getting him, but it's taking a long time. This guy just got into combat with him. That would. Oh, level twenty-seven. Yeah. Throw a knife at stitches at level twenty-seven. That's that's smart. L low survival instinct on that one. Uh, let's go in here. Crime and, nope, crime and punishment we don't need. That's a stockades quest. Alright, and guys, we can't do any more here right now. We are maybe getting towards the end of stuff to do, I feel like. Oh, we could try to do this. There were a bunch of stealth guys kind of stopping us from that one. We were having a heck of a time dealing with the stealth guys. Gabriel, I'm doing well. Thanks for being here. I, I think, guys, yeah, I think we're going to take a flight. I think we got a little flight ahead of us. Is there any reason to go to Stormwind and just jump the tram? I think maybe that'll be a little bit faster. I, I think I want to head to the wetlands. We, we have this kill quest. We're probably going to have a couple other things we could do. And we don't have a lot of quests in any other zone right now. So we don't have a big hub of quests to work on. We could go to... R oh, this is not. This is Wetlands too. Oh yeah, we could do this. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, maybe we come back to the Wetlands. I feel like... I feel like that's our best bet. We might also be able to clear this Murloc camp. So we couldn't continue this one before because we, we couldn't do the three pull that was surrounding this objective. But I think we're at a level now where we can do it. And I, I should have put myself on a flight, and then something? we could have talked about all that stuff. That would have been super Farewell. big brain smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Auntie, obviously, I'm going to stand right next to Stitches with my map open while the guards kill him. What I'm not going to do is throw a knife at him or, like, bless one of the guards or something. But, yeah. They're going to take care of him. He's not going to, like, he's not going to kill them all and then come kill me. Not in the amount of time that we were standing there. But, yeah, you know. You could be as careful as you want, but in that situation, we were not in any danger. <laughs> you guys were nervous? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I knew where I was, but, you know, the guards got him. There were lots of guards there, you know? And uh, and there were other players tagging him, so... <laughs> I was kind of thinking, like, if, if somehow Stitches kills all these guards, he's going for that rogue first. Ah, uh, let's see. South Shore. We don't really have a lot we can do here yet in Hillsbread. It's always kind of weird to me, on, on the Alliance side, how little you get to do in the Hillsbread foothills at this level. Because the Horde, the Horde would be doing a lot of questing there right now. If we were level 28 on the Horde side, we'd be pretty deep into the Hillsbread foothills. I don't know if I have room uh, in the bank. Maybe I could just... Okay, okay, here's what we gotta do. We're maxed out. That's right. Let's go visit the first aid trainer. Let's, let's take care of that. Tactical, that's a good question. I'm not sure if gold is like silver, where like sometimes a tin vein will be a silver vein, I think is how it works. 
I, I'm not sure if gold is like a chance to just exist off of something else or if it's its own farmable node. I've never gotten far enough to farm gold with uh, with mining. I, I, I far, I've done a little bit of silver and tin and I've never really gotten it past that, so... Perhaps something we will learn in the future. Speaking of fortitude, what is this? Well met. Go to the Royal Library, speak with Milton. A book of metallurgy. Okay. The Alliance. I'm interested. I need a book at 150. Oh. Well, that's not any fun at all. Ah, uh, that's a Nomergon quest. A missing diplomat. Uh, we could do some of these. These are like, you run around a lot and do these. And it's like a big story about the king being kidnapped. King's honor, friend. Well, we can do silk. And yeah, we, we can't get the next rank, which is a huge bummer. So where is that at? Where do we get the next rank? Light bless you. Is that the one that we have to get from the Arathi? Oh gosh, it is, isn't it? Is this her right here? D or d him, whatever, Deneb Walker. Joe McGinnis says, so hard because it's easier. Yeah, possibly. Not just easier, but just like, you're, yeah, easier. You can get the dungeons easier. That's important to me. I don't like how the Alliance is gimped by being so far away from so many of the dungeons. You know, you're really far from SFK while you're in level. You're really far from the Scarlet Monastery where you're at level. And it's just so easy on the Horde side, it seems so imbalanced. And all the Horde really misses out on as far as like convenience is dead mines. It's not convenient to do dead mines, but that's it. It's convenient to do everything else on the Horde side. So yeah, totally. Totally because it's easier, because hardcore is hard enough already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know some of you guys like Horde more, but uh, I feel like I feel like it's probably pretty evenly split. There's a, there's a likelihood that I would I would do Horde, and if I did if I did another Shaman, it would be a Tauren. Yeah, I don't think I wouldn't do a Troll or, or an Orc. I kind of I kind of want to spend less time in Durator, but we're probably going to spend a bunch of time there anyway. But yeah, I'd probably do Tauren Shaman if I did Horde. And we just missed the tram. How sad is that? Mm. Taxi Arcus, you ask if I press W or if I have side mouse buttons for moving. Uh, when I move with WASDA, I move with WASDA on the keyboard, but yeah, I mean, I use a bunch of ways to move my mouse, strafing keys, WASDA, yeah. I, I do a little bit of everything with how I control the character, but yeah, I do it on the keyboard, not on the mouse. And when I'm moving with the mouse, it's by pressing the mouse buttons in. That's it. Yeah, Johnny Hoover, I'm, I'm thinking probably probably Horde, especially because we're, we're going to get this character all the way to 60, so we're going to be playing Alliance for a while. And uh, we'll, we'll probably be ready to see some Horde side stuff by the time the official servers come out. Operation High Jump, thanks for being here. I'm doing pretty good. 
I hope you're doing well. Oh, uh, Mr. Wheels, don't tell me that. Yeah, I just had that feeling that I'm like, maybe I did miss it. I don't know. Maybe I did. Yeah. There's that chance. Did you see it go? Because like, I didn't quite see it, but I had, a, I had a sensation. I heard a sound effect. And I thought to myself, did I just miss the tram behind me? Because that would suck. And it might, We'll find out in a minute. If this one comes up, then I definitely did. That's what it, that's what it seems like. Yeah, I, just, I just love standing in the tram. There we go. Yep. That'll go on the list now of like when people say, well, what's the most embarrassing stuff you've done? Oh, remember the one time I just missed the tram behind me? Mm-hmm. Megan, hey, welcome. Thanks for stopping by the stream. You see, someone said earlier they didn't have, like, the reaction speed or the reactions to play WoW. And it's like, well, I play WoW, I don't even have the reaction to catch the tram. So anybody can do it, you know? Yeah, we're too high level for Deadmines. So I'm not doing any dungeons on this character. Unless you guys somehow get characters up to level with me and you were to send me an in-game whisper and say, Hey, we gotta run together. That would be the only way I would do a run. I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh... I'm not doing dungeons on this tune otherwise. I don't want to risk the biscuits. I, I don't want to have a freak occurrence be what ends the character. When we die on this character, if we die, I want it to be because of something only I did. Uh, that's how I would be okay with it. I, I don't want it to be because of a, of a bad pull or a pet pulling an extra group or just a, a glitched out mob adding to the pull. And Deadmines was the first place that I kind of acknowledged, you know, that kind of stuff can definitely happen. And because I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to make this the last character that we do on Blood Cell Buccaneers, so I'd like it to go all the way. <laughs> and I need to do everything I can to like responsibly increase the probability of that happening. Hey. So, yeah. <laughs> what is, he wants four minor mana potions. Ah, uh, would I ever be able to complete that? I, I don't know. Okay, out to the flight point. Peter, this is the first YouTube stream that you've watched? That's awesome, man. I'm honored. Thanks for being here. Everything helps, man. You just being here helps. Yeah, I appreciate you. That's awesome. Yeah, Joe, we'll see. We'll do dungeons in, in the far off future of uh, of the new hardcore servers uh, when we're when we're gilded up and we are we are good to go. Yeah. Well, that's it. Keep your feet. Let's see, yeah, it's a good time to come back. Yeah, definitely, and, and but a month from now, you know, we could at least have a date on the hardcore servers if that's something that interests you, so definitely a good time to come back to WoW. Mr. Rose, you've been here for two years now? Thank you, man. That's a lot of support, I appreciate that. It's sometimes crazy to think that we, we've been playing Classic for four years. Four years this August. Kurt Logan, I'm not playing D4 today. I have done some D4 streams. Uh, the game is is good. It's just not it's not really catching me. I think that the people who really love Diablo and the people that really love that type of game are going to be super into it. You know, for me, it's just okay. You know, the story is okay. The gameplay is fun. 
but not fun in the way like something like Hades is fun. So it's like a little bit slower fun, but also some of the bosses kind of spike. I don't know. I think it's a good game. I just don't know if I'm going to get stuck into it. Like, I want to give it more of a chance. I want to see the campaign. I I'm kind of trying to, to determine to play, like, the campaign out and to see that, but... Yeah. There's things about it that are good, but there's things about it that I don't really care for. It's a very pretty game that has great animations in combat. Joe, you could probably check the uh, vendors on Wowhead, and they, if you check the vendors that sell the heirloom gear, it should have a badge amount, so you're looking at how many badges you would need, and then that's like how many bosses you have to kill in heroic runs, basically. And the time that takes is going to be a little bit different from person to person, depending on how quickly you do runs and how quickly you find groups and stuff like that. If you're trying to farm up a full set of heirlooms with, with gear, with badges, it's, it's going to take you a while. And then I think some of them you have to you have to be in a guild and have a certain rank in the guild because I think the the back piece and maybe the helmet come from the guild vendor. All right, let's see. We're going out to the to the excavation site, and on the way we're gonna fight the uh, raptors. Let's check our inventory. Not, not a lot going on with the inventory. Farewell. Diablo 4 seems really like it's, it's a great game for people who are going to care about the end game. Like if you are excited to do an end game ARPG because, you know, Path of Exile is something that you didn't get into, couldn't get into, missed the boat on or whatever, and you want to be in on the ground floor of an end game progression loop in, a, in an ARPG, that, then Diablo 4 is probably the game for you if that's what you want. But if you're thinking about Diablo 4 and you're not thinking about that end game play loop and you, you're not thinking about endgame at all and you're not excited to grind out all that endgame stuff every single day for the rest of your life, if that doesn't excite you and get you going, then they probably didn't build the game for you. You know what I mean? And that's kind of how I feel. Like they didn't build the game for me. I, I'm just there for the story, which is mediocre, and uh, the world building, which has been okay. So that, that really wasn't the focus. I feel like the big focus uh, for the creative team, for the whole team of D4, was to make like a, a good endgame loop that wasn't quite as rough to get into and quite as grindy as Path of Exile, but was still like a, a beefy endgame loop for people who just want to go to the endgame and do seasonal content, etc. Oh, look at this. The camp is cleared. Somebody must have just come in here and cleared this. That's, that's awesome. And then there should be... Yeah, there's another one up ahead. Let's get a food buff going. Auntie S, have I made any real life friends from WoW during all these years? I have not. I've played WoW with many real life friends, but I've never met someone in WoW who then became a real life friend, as in a person that I talked to consistently for long periods of time or would like hang out with and see, I'm assuming you would mean. And so the answer to that definition of real life friend would be no. I've made lots of friends in the game who I played with for short periods of time in guilds or in other groups, and you know, those are just people that I played the game with who were cool people who I never saw again outside of that guild or group. But not like real life friends, where like we're gonna hang out, get a beer, chat and see each other or something, or we're gonna call each other on holidays and stuff. The answer to that is no. Nerdstrong, you're doing defer for the hardcore runs. Yeah, watch out for the butcher, man. Have you got killed by the butcher yet? Because when I was playing D4 thinking about how little I had died, I was like, man, I should have done a hardcore run. You know, we haven't died. The game's pretty easy, and I'm not even really trying to live. And so if I were really trying to live, it'd probably be easy to live. And then the butcher spawned randomly. I didn't realize it was a runaway thing. I didn't realize he was going to chase me, basically, until he killed me at my level. So I kind of tried to kite him and, like, fight him. And I realized too late that I was just supposed to get the hell away from him. And that was my first death, was to the Butcher. And I thought, if this had been a hardcore character and I hadn't known about the Butcher or his mechanic and that had ended my character, that might have been like the last and only hardcore character that I played. <laughs> because I'm like, it, it, was, it was weird, it just came out of nowhere and it seemed totally random. And then we were dead. Because I, I had been kind of interested in trying uh, Diablo 4 hardcore runs, obviously, because we're doing all the hardcore runs here. 
So originally it interested me, and now that I got killed by the Butcher randomly on a not hardcore character, I'm like, no. I, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to have a hardcore character that at any moment the Butcher could come and just ruin it, you know. I'm sure there are things you can do to avoid the Butcher. Like if I googled it, there'd probably be a way to like just avoid the Butcher entirely possibly. Or, or methods of dealing with him that you could employ, I'm sure. Johnny Hoover, just randomly two of your guildmates live down the street? Man, that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be super cool. If I ever had a situation like that, then yeah, I'd probably have made some real life friends. That kind of thing just never happened. That's awesome, though. Mr. Wheels, that's cool, man. Yeah, some people really like to do that. And I, I do understand. It's just something that I've never done. Yeah, Nerdstrong, you probably knew about the Butcher beforehand, though, didn't you? Because you probably did a little bit of homework and stuff. <laughs> it just took me by surprise, and I, I would have played a hardcore character the blind just the same way, and that would have been the end of it. Maybe sometime in the future. I, I am going to try to play some more D4 and just see if we can get through the campaign. Maybe by the time I get through the campaign, I'll love pressing the button so much that I'd want to play more. I just know I'm not going to do the endgame stuff, so hardcore probably would be the only, only other way that I tried to play. It's funny that you guys played together for a year before you found out. That's hilarious. Let's go up here and check for this bronze, this bronze tube. I, I don't think he's going to have one, but we can, we can go see while we're up here. Just a few Asmin streams? Okay, right on. Yeah, I didn't know about him and I just... Maybe maybe I just was too slow to realize that it was a runaway thing. That's that's what I felt like. I felt like I should have just realized right away with how little damage I was putting into him. That it was a runaway thing. But I thought, you know, like maybe I could kite him and kill him that way. And it, just, it did not happen like that. <laughs> he put us down. Summarily executed us. Mr. Wheels, enjoy the game, man. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. Patrick, you want to know how many hours I try to sleep? Dude, I try to sleep like eight or nine, but it doesn't happen because, you know, I have an eight-year-old. And sometimes you get sick, like he currently is, and then instead of getting eight or nine hours of sleep, you get like four hours of sleep if you're super lucky and the two-hour nap later in the day. But I try to sleep as much as possible. I, I don't stay up super late, you know? Usually bedtime happens around midnight at the latest. Because, uh, yeah, typically morning starts at seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the summers. Yeah, and that being said, uh, I, I have a really easy life that I live comparatively to a lot of people, so I, I have the time to say I'm going to devote eight or nine hours to sleep. And I understand that not everybody is in that same situation or chooses to be in that same situation, so. Sleep is important to me, and I will nap to get it. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an unashamed napper, and I can tell myself to sleep, and I can usually fall asleep pretty quickly no matter what time of day it is if I'm tired. Auntie, you want to know when was the last time I pulled an all-nighter? I, I could not tell you the last time I intentionally Alrighty, chose to stay up all night because it would have been a very, very long time ago and I can't even think of it. Uh, you know, obviously having a kid, there are times you pull an all-nighter against yes. your will. <laughs> and it's just something that happens from time to time. So those things happen, you know, every way. once in a while. But choosing to stay up all night... No. <laughs> the when's the last time I did it? My answer is no. How are you? What can I get That's for you That's what today? I say. 
an all-nighter. When, when I was, uh, the last time I did an all-nighter, probably when I was like 14 at the roller rink. We used to go for like all-nighters at the roller rink where they lock you in, your parents come get you in the morning because, you know, teenagers are super trustworthy and never get up to any bad stuff on their own without parental supervision. Yeah, it would have been when I was like 14 or 15 at a roller rink. Would have been the last time that I intentionally pulled an all-nighter, as you say. But I'm a really boring person, so... Kind of makes total sense if you know me. I never even pulled all-nighters for WoW expansions. What I would do is I would go to bed early. And then I would wake up at 4 a.m. And then I would have 8 hours of sleep and everybody in my guild would be having to go to bed. And then instead of sleeping like 7 or 6 hours, like I did, they'd oversleep for like the next 12 hours and be totally useless. And then I would have a lot of energy and I would just play the game from 4 a.m. on. So as people were falling offline because they couldn't stay awake, I was waking up. That's how I handled my WoW expansions. I went to bed early and I got up early. And it was easier because by the time I got on at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., it was like kind of empty. And I didn't have all that competition that people logging in right at midnight had. And then I wasn't super exhausted for most of the next day, so it all always worked out. Six, as you say, getting home when the sun is coming up is the absolute worst. Yeah, it, it must be from what I know about human biology. We're, we're not really meant to be on that schedule, although obviously in modern society, a lot of people have to work overnights and stuff like that. But keep in mind, like human physiology and the human brain it was always programmed to respond to like sunlight and where the sun was and if it was light or dark out. And just biologically, your, your body wants to be awake when it's light out and it wants to be asleep when it's dark out. And you can you can resist that and retrain yourself to it I, I just don't think it's a healthy thing for people to have to do. I, I wish that there were ways and means so that people did not have to work those kinds of shifts for like, a, especially when you have to do them for long periods of time in life. The latest I ever had to work was like 1 or 2 a.m. I worked at a Blockbuster video when I was like a teenager, getting into my 20s. And we would we'd be open till like 2 a.m. so... You know, you'd go to work at like 4 or 5 in the afternoon. You'd work till it was late, you know, and then the only side effect of that is like you get off work at 2 a.m. and like you're not going to go right to bed because who gets off work and comes home and goes right to bed. So you get off work at 2, you stay up for a few hours, hang out with your mates, and then, uh, you know, by 4 or 5 in the morning, the sun's coming up and then you're going to sleep. And that was the only time I was on kind of a reverse schedule was like right around when I was like 18, 19, 20. And it was horrible. I never liked it. It was always bad, you know. It was. It felt so bad, like you'd wake up and the sun would be setting. And you're like, oh, that's awful. My day is starting, but the day is done. And that's kind of strange. I have to remember the screechers, they screech. And when they screech, they call for help from, like, everybody around. So if I'm going to pull one of these guys, i got to pull them way back. Like, way back. Maybe all the way back here. Kyle, I appreciate that, man. Hey, thanks for being here, hanging out with the stream. Yeah, for the immersive stuff, you know, we, we've picked up the Tauren Warrior in Northrend. 
And going forward, after this week sometime, once everything's kind of stabilized here for me in my personal life, I plan to make sure that at least two of those videos go up every day again. Because I know we've been kind of a little bit a little bit lax on the uh, immersive videos going up because I've been streaming so much and I've been really I've been really loving streaming. But we will be getting back to a more consistent schedule with uh, uploads on the immersive videos, definitely. All right, same thing here. We can pull this guy safely, but we gotta pull him way back. Mogar, man, you're fishing and you've seen four stingrays come up to your dock? That's pretty awesome, man. The only place that I've seen a stingray is at like a zoo. Like swimming in a circle looking real miserable most of the time. They're probably just curious, you know. I doubt they want you to catch them either, if they really thought about it. Oh. Felipe, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging out with the stream. All these guys have been killed. Let's see. We can uh, we can move to the south and the west a little bit, and maybe find some more that way. JC, lurking is fine. Lurking is awesome. I encourage lurking. Yeah. Felipe, no, I I, pr I will not be streaming on Twitch. No, I'm really happy to be able to stream here on YouTube. It's been really easy for you guys to find me here, I think. Whereas if I was streaming on Twitch, I would have to do a lot of extra work and like nag at you guys all the time to join the stream, join the stream, hey, I'm streaming. I'd, I'd have to be more active on Twitter and be tweeting that kind of crap out. And yeah, I'm happy that I started streaming here because it just made the most sense with all my content living here on YouTube. Uh, and also YouTube lets you stream and upload VODs in 1440p. And like the video quality of my stuff is really important to me that it's at least in 1440 because I feel like 1080 is just kind of garbage. And uh, what causes is it's pixelation that you get when it's in 1080, like movement will pixelate everything. So I really appreciate YouTube for the 1440 streaming and, and uh, VODs. And it's just easier for me because you guys, you guys know me from here. So it was really never a big question of where I would stream at if I streamed. Live life strong. Welcome. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, you know, show up when you can, and when you can't, we'll always be here. There will always be VODs. Yeah, we passed the threshold of 26, too. Yeah, this is the new record. Now, every level now is awesome, because every level now is the new record. Super exciting. Billy Bob, hello. Welcome, man. Thanks for coming and hanging out.
Uh, I think we go ahead. We can heal through this, and we should be fine. I don't want to run and risk running into something else while we're running away from this one. Is probably what would happen. Although that exit looks really clear now that I see it. Yeah, Mogar man ask in classic do you get your mount at 40? Yes. At, in classic we have to wait till 40. And we will get our mount I think completely for free. There was a little debate as to whether or not we'd have to pay for the training, but since our mount is a spell, I think we just pay for the spell training cost and that's it. And level 41 I guess they just give you, although the level 61 people have said there's a quest chain involved and it's kind of a challenging and long quest chain to get the uh, epic riding at 60. But you know, if we get the 60, I, I'm probably not going to care too much about epic riding. It's not really going to be like a huge priority to me once we hit 60. Well, there we go. That one's all done. It took a little bit of time, but we were able to stay relatively safe. Which is always nice. Uh, we might just kill our way through here. Yeah, Felipe, you know, they're, they're totally different games, yeah. Some people think that retail is really easy because, like, getting to the objectives for the quest and stuff, all the quests are really close. You don't really have to do a lot of traveling or thinking about anything. But sometimes in, in retail, I've gotten myself killed so many times in retail. Because the thing about retail is, like, different is, like, the mob proximity. There's so many more mobs per, like, square foot in the, in the questing areas because in retail... Instead of kind of designing an open world landscape, they design like gameplay levels, kind of. So they cram mobs in, they're all super packed together, and that's like the only thing that makes retail really challenging from like a combat perspective and a survival perspective is that, especially if you're doing BFA content, which is where they push like new players, they push you right from Exile's Reach into BFA. The mobs in BFA, there's so many of them, they're so tightly packed that, uh, your character is a little bit more powerful, I feel like, but also like your propensity to just pull a bunch of mobs accidentally is also there. But yeah, they're 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 like so different. Classic is about I always think of like classic is about the journey, and uh, retail is just about the destination. Retail is about the end game stuff, the instance combat, the, the battlegrounds, dungeons, raids, mythic plus, uh, world quest. You know that's that's what retail is there for. It's there for the people who really enjoy the end game. And just want to get to the end game and do that loop, which some people really enjoy, you know. So it's 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 good that there's so many different ways to play and enjoy World of Warcraft right now. Like you get to pick your flavor, and that's not often true of a lot of games. Like that you get to pick your flavor of how to play throughout how they've been in history. Billy Bob, you want to know if I grew up watching Jerry Springer? Because what you say at the end of your videos, you know, what I say at the end of my videos, I stole from Lester Holt, to be fair. It's basically, it's like a, it's like a rephrasing of what Lester does on the nightly news. Yeah, but I've heard that about Jerry Springer, and to be fair, like, I didn't watch Jerry Springer because I was like a kid. It wasn't really stuff that, like, kids should be watching, right? But yeah, obviously pretty familiar with Jerry Springer. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember that he had that outro, you know, I wasn't like that sucked in. I was there for like the on-stage brawls, you know, <laughs> the chaos, like most people were there for the chaos. I don't know if we were there for Jerry to give us like good vibes at the end of every episode of people like screaming and brawling at each other. <laughs> it's kind of a weird way for Jerry to end his episodes when I think about it. You know what I mean? Like, what? take care of yourselves, don't end up on my show. 
and we'll see you next time. Uh, should be more of what he had for an outro. Yeah, JC, it's from Lester. That's where I that's where I adopted it from. But people say Jerry Springer had had the same outro, basically, which is weird for for Jerry's show, you know, and the kind of content that you'd find on it typically. I appreciate his like his attempt though to send like good vibes out there, but I, I think everything about the show was negative vibes. You can't give out your good vibes just in your outro, like <laughs> you know, it's a good attempt, but it doesn't quite get you there. JSZZ, hello man, thanks for being here. Yeah, Lester's so good. You know he's just so genuine, you know. I'm gonna watch Jerry's outro though. I'm gonna find a clip on YouTube of his outro and I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it. Cause yeah, I don't remember that at all. And it might have actually been my wife that first told me that his outro was the same. Cause I, I think Jerry, didn't Jerry Springer pass recently? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm from Michigan, so it's a... Yeah. We lived in Missouri for a long time, in Kansas City. But we're originally from Michigan, we live in Michigan now. You got my attention? He did pass recently, yeah. Watch your back. You know, sixes, I don't like barbecue. And my wife's a big barbecue fan, so she she loved Casey for like their awesome barbecue, and I'm just not, I've never been a fan of barbecue. For like a really stupid reason, and that is like, I don't like messy food. <laughs> it's like the most childish reason not to like a type of food is that I don't like messy food, so I don't often eat it. And when I do eat it, like I don't think I enjoy it the way that people who love barbecue really enjoy it, because all I'm thinking about is like how messy it is. Cause I have a little bit of OCD like that. <laughs> so yeah, I missed out on all the awesome barbecue. I mean, I ate some of it, but I, like I said, I don't think I had the appreciation for it that people who really love barbecue would have had. Dragon's Bane, you're getting Bob Ross vibes, but the canvas is wow. I like how you put that, man. Awesome phrasing. But the canvas is wow. Very nice. You don't like barbecue blasphemy? Oh, I know, man. Yeah, when I tell people that, they lose their minds. Especially when I lived in Missouri. And it's the same thing. It's not that I don't like it, okay? Like, I can acknowledge that it can taste good. I don't like bothering with it, because I'd rather just eat something that isn't messy. It's, it's weird, but... Oh, come on. Come on, we got it. Oh, yeah. There's our excitement for the day. Excitement over. Excitement over. Like, I'll sit there and try to eat it with, like, a fork and knife and stuff, which is, like, not how you eat some barbecue ribs. It just, it doesn't work out unless you pull them apart and pull the meat out with your fingers, and I just don't want to get into it like that. Kyle, you ask if I have a live streaming schedule. Right now, I haven't locked anything in. We have typically been doing afternoon streams at least once a day. But, yeah, my ideal schedule is that, like, I come on sometime around, like, 10 or 11 and go to like three or four and then a few times a week I want to do like an evening stream but com coming up in the next week I'll be able to lock down like a more precise schedule but yeah for right now it's been kind of erratic I, I have a sick kid at home and uh, we've been just kind of working through that and I just started streaming apparently uh, a week ago I started streaming so it's still pretty early in my streaming career uh, and I will have a schedule and We'll do our best to adhere to it. Soon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I want to have a big stream from the morning through the middle of the day. And then I want to have the option to sometimes come on in the evenings around, around the time we're on now. 
I'm not feeling like super safe in this area, if I'm being totally honest. And I need to be coming down here and clicking on some of these uh, relics. JC, so it used to bug your ex mother in law when you ate the ribs with a knife and fork. Mm hmm. Yeah, it, it bothers people, it annoys them. Yeah, they don't like it. They're like, that's not how you eat it. And I'm like, I'll eat food how I want. Don't you tell me how to eat. <laughs> Six is it's a super dangerous area yeah and I, i've almost gotten us killed at least twice which begs the question muted again that might have been that might have been a double tap I'm going to clean my keyboard. The keyboard is going to get a thorough cleaning. And it's going to like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's I'm du it's double tapping my 5 key. So like when I come off a of mute. Because I like, I like to ride mute. I'm used to being in like corporate meetings and stuff. I have like 8 years of muscle memory being in corporate meetings and Skype meetings and stuff. Where you just keep yourself on mute all the time. Unless you're talking. So I have a reflex to mute myself. And what's happening now is my keyboard is double tapping. So I'm coming off mute, but it just hits again. It puts me right back on. Yeah. Felipe, am I enjoying Diablo? Not as much as I wish I was. I guess, like, I've iterated on it a lot, my response to that question, and, like, the simplest form of the answer is not as much as I wish I was. It's not. It's just not pulling me in. Tactical, you asked if I have a stream deck. Man, I started streaming a week ago and it was a surprise to me that we were streaming because I thought I was just testing OBS and my ability to connect to my YouTube account and suddenly, you know, there was a hundred people in my chat. So no, I have nothing professional set up, man. Mm -mm. This is all stuff that's like still to come. Research I have to do and things like that. Yeah. I'm a rookie. Probably worse than a rookie. The accidental streamer. Yeah, man, that's me. Because I had planned to start streaming for the hardcore servers. That had been the plan that I thought I had in my head. I was like, I won't really do this now. I'll just make sure that it works. And, uh, yeah. It worked. It turns out it's it's easy to get it to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Lael, I'm definitely going to check it out, right? I will have more professional stuff in place in the future. You know, obviously it's like something that you grow. And that's how I've kind of taken the approach to the whole channel the whole time is like I kind of get stuff as I progress and as I absolutely need it. And I, and I kind of build it up slowly over time instead of dumping like a lot of resources and stuff into it right away. I kind of take a gradual approach. And when I, I, I'm, I'm not a really smart person so taking a gradual approach and like learning new devices and new ways of doing things, learning those things slowly and like getting used to them over time is really important to me. Because if I try to use a bunch of, I learned with the Shure SM7B that trying to change my whole setup and a lot of how my audio and stuff works and doing that really quick on the fly is really bad for like my productivity. Because I struggled to get the Shure SM7B to work how I wanted it to and I struggled to get the recording software and OBS to work how I wanted it to and it just wasted so much time. Uh, and then I ended up going back to the Yeti X because it just was a better, more functional mic for what I do. So yeah, I will look at decks and see, you know, about getting stuff set up properly in the future. Yeah, I'm sure it's a must, right? Exactly. Like, I'm sure it's something that when I when I see it, when I get it set up and stuff, I'll be like, oh yeah, how would I not have this? That, that's how it's been with a lot of things uh, that I've like come to adopt over time. It's like you get it, and then you're like, oh, how have I not been using it like this? Yeah, I'm not going to push in too deep to this area. These guys seem like they're going to be a little bit easier to manage, but they run, so working in Seal of Justice to, to stop them from fleeing would probably be a good idea as they get low on HP. So maybe I will have to try to do that. And we're going to mainly just tag these guys that are off on their own. And we're, we're not going to mess with any of the camps, and I need to pull my camera like way out here because... 
not the place to have a close camera. If there is any place in Hardcore to have a close camera, which there might not be. Yeah, these guys are just be absolutely beating on us. Just, oh my gosh. Doc Muru asks, do you have a full or part-time job? No. I do not have a full or part-time job. I don't have a place I have to go to punch into a place so that someone else besides Google can write me a check. Mm -mm. Not for the last two years, I haven't. And no, this is not a full-time job. In fact, it's not a job at all. It's a hobby that I love, that I'm very lucky to be able to do. Do I pull this guy? Oh, uh, maybe. From like right here. Got him. Thanks, Lael. Yeah, I think this mic is fine for what I do. The, the Shure SM7B, even when I got it to work decently, I didn't really feel like it was a huge quality improvement for what I do and how I use the mic. Liam asked, if given the chance, would I stream as a full-time job? Liam, let me be clear, this is what I do right now. I, I stream and I make YouTube videos. And I play basketball out in the yard, and I throw the frisbee to my dogs, and I hang out with my son and my wife. I go for walks. Uh, I'm really lucky to be able to do the things that I love in my day. You know, and obviously there's always chores and things and stuff that has to get done and taken care of, but yeah. I, I don't I don't have a full or part-time job where I go punch a clock and somebody else pays me for doing work that they tell me to do. Uh, I'm lucky enough at this point in my life to be able to do the things that I love and to have a good life. So, yeah. I, I have been given the chance to do this as much as I want and I, and I take advantage of that chance every day, every, every time I can because I love being here. And six is, yeah, I'm trying to treat my blessing as a combat buff because I'm, I'm not trying for 100% uptime, but that being said, there have been a couple fights I probably have not had it up. But yeah, I'm not trying to keep it up all the time, just in fights. D Domino says, they say, it's not, a, it's not a job if you love what you're doing. Absolutely, yeah. People get really confused. <laughs> People get really confused about job and career and work. They have a lot of confused ideas that capitalism has given them. Thanks, JC. I appreciate that. I don't think I want to cut through the middle here, but we kind of have to. I'd, I'd love to get onto this hill, pull this one. I just worry that he might pull this other guy. Maybe now is our chance. Here we go. Are we going to make it? Let's pull him right up the hill. We didn't make it without getting dazed, which is not ideal. The nets, we can get we can get out of the nets. What I need to be careful about is the fact that they run. I need to be seal of justicing them before they're at the health threshold to run away. If we get netted, we can pop out of it really quick. Yeah, the worst scenario would be like not being able to pop out and not being able to stop them from running, and then we could get into a lot of trouble here. But luckily we have tools to deal with it. Bye-bye, Net. There might be something in combat, in combat text that I can turn on to tell me when the aura fades. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I turned it on today in our Wrath of the Lich King playthrough to know when Battle Shout wore off. Here we go. Enable floating combat text. Uh, I don't need that. I don't need that. Reactive 
abilities and then fading auras. Yes. Yes. Okay, yep. That's what we want. We want this. We, we, we could also maybe use show low mana and health. But yeah, fading aura should tell me when might falls off. It should be a green floating text that will remind me so that you guys don't have to. It's not fair of me to put the burden onto you when I have tools in the game that could tell me. So, and I don't need to download an add-on. The in-game combat text will tell me when it wears off. Now, obviously, I have to then push the button myself. But uh, we might be one step ahead here. Oh, so yeah, we, we do the we do the blessing of freedom, which gets rid of might. That was the part that my brain was not automatically connecting. Mm -hmm. I don't really appreciate how it started to rain on our parade here because the visibility when it rains actually goes down and it is harder to see if you can imagine that. Who thought that rain would make it harder to see? Hmm. I can maybe pull this guy? He's a swamp runner as long as he doesn't have ranged attacks. I, I think we can pull him out of here. Okay, that looks good. That looks good so far. Johnny Hoover, thank you, man. That's super generous of you. I appreciate that. I love being here and hanging out with you guys. It's It's been so much fun. Everyone's been great. It's obviously like, you know, I like the pre-recorded stuff now also for what it is because it's a, it's a lot different than streaming, so... I enjoy them both, but I'm, I'm really happy to have started doing this when I did and that I didn't keep putting it off because uh, yeah putting it off was a mistake and putting it off was something that I've been doing for like two years I've been putting it off D Domino you say the mob density here seems high yes it is especially this stuff you know a lot of wow and if you become a big hardcore player you kind of have to remind yourself of this but like the game was never intended for you to be able to never die uh, and it was also intended for you to be able to group up with other people and tackle areas like this and to have to group up you were supposed to come here and think, oh my gosh, I need to like group with somebody. Let's see, is there anybody around I can bring into my group? Unfortunately, in hardcore, we, we don't have that security. We can't do that. You know, sometimes we have people near us who kind of can fight like in tandem with us, but we can't ask for help and we can't form a group. So when we're looking at areas like this, they were just designed for groups to tackle because it was an MMO. And we're trying to play it on hardcore, which is a lot of fun, but it's like the game was never meant to be played that way, which is really interesting. Now this guy I'm not sure about. He, he looks like he might be connected to this other enemy back here, so maybe not a good idea. How about this guy back here by himself? Oh, he might not be totally by himself. There might be just enemies needing to render into the world still. Okay, we've got some corpses over here, which probably means respawns coming in soon. This guy is kind of out there a little bit on his own. I bet we could pull him up the hill here and uh, get him back here safely. Ellen, I appreciate you being here. You can't give Blizzard any more money after the Overwatch thing? Uh, the Overwatch thing. So the Overwatch thing where like... Is that the Overwatch thing where they explain that... They explain the game was not going to be what they thought the game was going to be? Like how Overwatch 2 is not going to be, you know... Overwatch 2 with all the single player story campaign evolving elements that we thought it was going to have? Is that what you're talking about? 
I saw a Bellular vid where he talked about the Overwatch thing for a bit, but it, I'm not a big Overwatch player, so it didn't really... Yeah, the no PvE. Yeah, the no PvE, right? Because they were like, Overwatch 2 is going to be a big PvE game. It'll have its PvP, but it, I remember that. And then, yeah, obviously it didn't go that way, right? Because Overwatch 2, like, Overwatch in general, that world started when they started with Project Titan way back in the day, right? And then, like, Project Titan never came out about, but they came up with the plan to, like, they made Overwatch, and they're like, well, we'll make Overwatch, and then slowly, over time, we'll change the type of game Overwatch is, and we'll turn it into Project Titan over a number of many years. That was their plan, which is super effing ambitious. But it should have been obvious that you can't release a game in one genre, like the hero shooter genre, and then slowly turn that game into an MMO or something. You know what I mean? You can release a game that's a hero shooter and then later release a different game in the same universe as an MMO, kind of like League of Legends did. They made League of Legends, but now like, you know, 15 years, 20 years later, they're going to have a League of Legends MMO in that universe, but they didn't try to turn League of Legends into an MMO. And that's what Blizzard wanted to do with Overwatch. They thought they were going to be able to start it as a hero shooter in one, add like story mission PvE in two, and then in three just keep taking these steps until it became the Project Titan they wanted it to be. That's not how game development works. It's crazy. It's crazy that they were allowed to kind of push forward with that kind of plan. That kind of plan would, would, would require leaders and developers, but especially leaders, to be in place for five, six, ten years at a time. And leaders and corporations don't stay in their roles in their same departments for that long. So it was that plan was always doomed to fail. It's surprising that uh, it didn't get shit canned sooner, honestly. Because what they should have done was they should have buckled down on embracing what Overwatch was. And what people liked about Overwatch. And they should have just made more Overwatch. That game might have been successful if they had done that, but they didn't. So yeah, I understand. If you were someone who was really excited for Overwatch to continue to evolve with its PvE, I totally get you being upset. Yeah, it's despicable to me just because any person with any kind of like business acumen should have looked at that plan and been like, no, like this is not going to work. You can't start a game in one genre and then slowly over time turn it into a different genre and expect everyone to want to come along on that ride and expect all the developers and leaders to be in place for that amount of time. It's so silly. It's so unfortunate that that was like what they were trying to do. And it didn't get far, right? We didn't even get to have an Overwatch 2 with any PvE in it. Like the plan got nowhere. It got nowhere really fast. And I feel like it maybe will put the nail in the coffin for Overwatch. And like, people loved Overwatch. <laughs> so weird. Blizzard gets themselves into these weird situations with their games that I don't feel like a lot of other developers do. Yeah, Elon, they, they were not transparent about, like, the state of the game. Uh, I don't know if they kept talking about the PvE or not, because I, I don't follow Overwatch news, so I don't know if they literally kept talking about how there'd be PvE with, when they knew there wouldn't be. I, I don't know that for sure, but they definitely were not transparent about uh, what was going on with the game and its development, and they just kept pretending like, everything's fine. They more like pretending like, everything's fine, everything's fine here, we're all fine here, how are you? And, but there was a big reactor leak, apparently, that they didn't want to tell us about, so... Rami002, you say they did keep talking about the PvE over the last couple years? Yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I also don't doubt that like some people on the project team knew that, that the whole plan was cancelled, and like, other t people probably didn't know that. 
it was probably like a need to know type of situation because obviously if you let that kind of info get out into the wild if everybody on the overwatch team knows that would probably be hard to keep under wraps right Hmm. like if everybody on the overwatch team knew that they were basically shit canning all their future plans for the overwatch franchise like that would be hard to keep a, a lid on so i feel like maybe only certain people knew about it until like recently but maybe that's not right maybe people can keep their mouth shut a lot better than i think they can it just seems hard to keep quiet a whole team of developers who know their their projects in the future are getting canceled you know jc more coffee I, I have to finish mine it's getting i have a little bit left and it's getting it's getting to that time of night where the coffee needs to be imbibed and then no more coffee can be coming in <laughs> Yeah, when they released it, they still kept talking about how the PV was coming. <laughs> like, that's why I kind of think, like, maybe some people didn't know. Like, maybe the PR people had no idea. And the PR people were still just pushing the game the way that they had been told to push the game. And uh, then, yeah, it, it, it was already canceled. Little did they know. And no matter how it played out, it, it's super unfortunate. It's not fair to anybody who's a, who's a fan of the game. Mm-hmm. These guys that dual wield, they just they deal so much damage to us. It's it's really impressive and it's quite frightening. It's quite frightening. Smoke asked, are you going to play official hardcore? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, this will probably be the last class that we do on Blood Cell Buccaneers. And then we'll be hopefully by then on the official hardcore servers sometime this summer. So far we think we're going horde side. And I'm, I'm pretty sure probably being a shaman is going to be the plan. Remy, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for being here and hanging out with the stream. Glad you're digging it. Liam, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a guild. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna do much running of the guild. I, I expect you guys to be able to like self manage. But there will be a guild. The Rambling Ramblers will probably be the name. Now, don't anybody get on the server and steal that guild name from me. I mean, if you want to do that, that'd be a lot of effort. Just don't try to sell it to me, sell it back to me, because I won't, I won't, I don't have that kind of money. Yeah, the Rambling Ramblers. Mm -hmm. And we'll see how that goes. Should be a good time. Philip Carter, you hope they announce Classic Plus at BlizzCon? They're not going to. Now at BlizzCon, at BlizzCon, you're gonna probably hear about uh, not Classic Plus. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, at BlizzCon, you might have to hear about Cataclysm Classic. So I wouldn't hold my breath, brother. We all want that. Trust me. I want I want all new things for Classic. I want new zones. I want new quests. I want new five mans while leveling. I want new five mans at end. I want new raids. I want all of it. But like, we're not gonna get it right now. And I would not hold my breath for any kind of BlizzCon announcement. They'll probably talk about seasonal stuff, you know, because by BlizzCon we should be into the new season, whatever it is. The new season should probably start around November, so I'm not actually sure. When is BlizzCon this year? Is it, It's in November, isn't it? Hmm, that's probably a good date to know, because whatever that date is, that'll probably determine when we're going to see the new season. 
But yeah, there's there's not going to be any any classic plus at BlizzCon, unfortunately. So yeah, BlizzCon's in November, and they'll probably be doing the new season sometime in November. So they'll they'll probably talk about seasonal classic era. They'll probably have some future plans for that to share with us. But I would not count on seeing too much in the way of classic plus. If by classic plus you mean like n brand new stuff, like brand new zones. When I think of classic plus, I, I need new zones, new dungeons, new raids big big changes um and i don't think we're gonna see anything quite like that as far as like what they'll do with cataclysm i really don't know anymore because i used to think they'd probably just push forward with it no matter what but i think that they can read the room and i don't think there's any desire out there anywhere for a cataclysm classic so i i don't know <laughs> I feel like they might still just push forward. Maybe the wheels are already in motion and they, they can't they can't stop the train type of deal, but they have to kind of sense that nobody has much hype for it, so But they probably feel lost about what they should do because it's it's gonna be hard to convince people at Activision that spending money making new content for a game that was made in two thousand four is a good idea. And the people who are higher up in the company, they, they have a, they have to make sure that the shareholders are gonna make more money this quarter than last quarter, etc. So it's going to be hard for them to get like the idea of new classic content greenlit. Because the, no one's going to want that. They're going to be like, well, can't you just uh, milk users by having more seasons or doing something easy? No one's going to be able to justify new content for classic as a way for Activision to make money. And unfortunately, that's how, that's how it works. Yeah, and I don't like it. Nobody likes it, but that's kind of how it is. If they can't say it's going to make us a lot more money or bring in a lot more users then they're not going to be able to, to get the ideas greenlit that they might want to do. Like, the devs the devs probably want... Oh, no. Oh, God, look at this. Let's get out of here. <laughs> we almost we almost got that whole camp. <laughs> yeah, the devs probably want Classic Plus. You know, the people who work at, at Blizzard as a, from, like, a development standpoint, creating content for, for the game, they probably want Classic Plus. But the people who are concerned about making the money, the people who are worried about, like, being efficient and just making the most money possible in that quarter, those people are not going to want... Classic Plus. Philip Carter asked, have I played Turtle Well before? No, I can't play Turtle Well. Because I can't play it on stream and I, and I can't play it on YouTube at all. Because private servers are against the Blizzard terms of service. You're not technically legally supposed to play on a private server. And I certainly can't stream it or record it. And what I don't want to do is I, I don't... Firstly, I don't even know if I'd want to play, pay, play on a private server unless I could somehow compensate Blizzard. Because I feel like you're you're playing someone's game still. You probably should have to be paying them money for it because they made it. Besides that, I would not want to like it a lot and then not be able to stream it or record it. That would really suck. So I've never tried it. Because the worst position for me to be in is like, I could love it. And then what can I do with that? Absolutely nothing. Tactical Warrior, you think it'll be a way for them to sell like the heroic versions of the game? Yeah, that, that would be a big impetus for someone at Activision to say, yes, push forward with Cataclysm Classic. We can sell stuff that, that has no value. Yeah, we, we can sell digital stuff for a shit ton of money. We don't have to make anything. The stuff's probably already coded in, into the game for the most part. Yeah, that is a big reason why we will see Cataclysm Classic. Mm-hmm. Because Cataclysm Classic, people at Activision will be like, well, that will make us money, right? We can sell this thing. Whereas if they try to justify Classic Plus, how are they going to sell us Classic Plus? You get Classic from your from your sub. Have you guys thought about that? What if the only way to get Classic Plus was to pay for like an expansion type deal? Would you want to pay $39 for Classic Plus? Because if you don't want to, or you think you feel hesitant, the people who make money at Activision will already know that about you. And that's why we won't ever see Classic Plus. Because I bet you just want it to be put into the game, don't you? I bet you just want to log in on like a patch day and have a bunch of new zones and a bunch of new content and a bunch of new raids. But that's not how businesses work these days. So you guys should think about that. Like, would you be, how much money would you be willing to spend for more content in Classic Plus? Smoke, you say that because you like it, but the people who are in charge of Activision, they probably don't see that data yet, if that data even exists, which I don't think that it does. For the simple reason, like I said, you, you get access to Classic with your sub, and a lot of people who play this game are just subbed for like the all the versions of WoW, so it's really hard to say how much Classic Plus might bring them, 
because they're not directly charging for like an expansion. Whereas with Cataclysm Classic, they know they can charge the deluxe and heroic additions for like mounts and cosmetics because they've done it before. And they know that in Cataclysm, they will be able to sell people the WoW token. And in Classic Era, so far there's no WoW token. So if you're an Activision bigwig and you're you're looking at ideas to greenlight to make the shareholders money, you're not going to greenlight Classic Plus for free. You might greenlight Classic Plus as an expansion pack sold to people for $39.99 with a deluxe edition for $59.99 and a super edition for $79. You might, you might greenlight that idea. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah? Like, and you could prefer it, but they don't want you to prefer it. They want you to want to pay for it. And they want to have data that indicates you'll pay for it. And with Classic Era, there's no data indicating that we'll pay for it. Because all we pay is a sub. So they don't have a lot of data that suggests people will dump lots of money into a Classic Plus type of situation. That data doesn't exist. But they know they can get money when they push out a new, uh, a new, ca a new Classic version. They know that makes them money. It makes them money on boost. It makes them money on the versions of the game with the digital products. And it's that WoW token, man. Get people into Cata. They're going to realize they don't have any money in Cata. They're going to buy those WoW tokens. Get that in-game gold going. You know? Think about it. And I don't like any of the stuff that I'm saying, but that, that's kind of how it works, though. I'm not supporting it or, or purporting it. I'm just saying like that's how, that's how they make choices. What will for sure make the most money for sure? And then they go with that. Lael, that's a strong way to put it. I don't like the WoW token. Some people like it. Yeah, it's a tough one because everyone's situation is totally different. I think it ruins the economy in the game. It ruins the in-game economy. I, I don't want to ever be able to buy gold in a game, but... It's a rough way of describing it, though. It might not be inaccurate, but it's a rough way of describing it, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know that I want to do this stuff down here in the excavation site right now. That stuff seemed really, really rough, and for sure we're going to die to those raptors if we do that right now. Gang, gang, it's not about the legality of buying gold, man. It's about the fact that nobody should be able to buy gold with real-life money. That's all it's about. Bots shouldn't exist. Farmers shouldn't exist. Blizzard should root them all out. They should pay hundreds of people to work to work every day to root out botters, to root out gold sellers. They should pay the workforce necessary, develop the AI technology necessary to do it. They don't want to do that because it would cost them money and it wouldn't make them money. So what they did is they said, okay, if you can't beat them, join them. If you can't beat them, join them is never a good justification for an action, especially an action that affects your entire player base and an action that can literally destroy an economy over time. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, the, the people, yeah, people buy gold illegally, but they don't have to be allowed to do that. Technology and a workforce can literally be employed to shut that kind of shit down. To say that it's impossible is pure naivety. To listen to Blizzard tell you it's impossible is really childish. Because what they mean when they say it's not possible, they mean it's not worth it for the amount of money, time, and workforce that it would take. It's not cost effective for Blizzard to shut down the illegal gold selling. So what they do instead is they sell it themselves, and they justify it, but it's a justification, you know what I mean? A justification doesn't make some shit right, it just explains why somebody made a choice, you know? It doesn't make it right, it just explains why they did it. That's all. Never believe a company or corporation if they tell you they can't do a thing. All that means is that they've done the cost analysis and the risk analysis, and it's not, it doesn't make sense for them monetarily to do that thing. That's all it means when a company or corporation tells you that it's not possible. You have to read between the lines and infer the subtext. You, you can't take it at like face value, you know, because that's not what they mean when they say those words. They're not even necessarily being disingenuous. They know what they mean when they say those words. They count on you not knowing what they mean and taking the words differently. 
Yes, we can't do that equals we can't do that for profit. Yeah. We're going to lose so much money doing that. That's what it means. We can't stop botters and illegal gold selling. It means we can't afford to try to stop them. There's no money to be made in it. We're going to hemorrhage money doing it. Would the game be better? Would the community be better? Would the economy be better? Absolutely. But they won't do it. So just keep that in mind. Don't, don't listen to corporations when they tell you stuff, okay? <laughs> Whether the, it's good stuff or bad stuff, always kind of like be skeptical until you see the true effects of it yourself. And what you'll see is that you'll see prices on the auction house in Wrath of the Lich King. The prices for everything will go up over time. Uh, because that's what happens when you pump a bunch of gold into the economy artificially is you get what's called inflation. So the price of goods will go up. You know, your flask costs, your potion costs, your, your bis that's on the auction house for crafted gear. All that stuff will go up over time and it'll be gradual. But it will definitely affect people eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, we're turning these in. This one goes inside the keep. We haven't been inside the keep. They need to. Yeah, they, they could do it, but Bobby needs another yacht. Yeah, he needs more gold plates on his yacht. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But he's a really nice guy, so he must deserve it. You know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, did I miss this guy? I don't think I'm going the right way. No, we're not going up here. We're going to the command room, right? Hmm. Yeah, it's totally. Manitude, it is about money and not losing it, right? But it's about what people say when they, when they literally look you in the eye and tell you a fucking lie and they say, we can't do that. And you believe them? Firstly, they're lying. They're liars. And if you believe them, you're stupid. You know what they could say? They could be transparent. And they could say, yeah, we could stop the botters and the gold sellers. It would cost too much money. We feel like it would negatively impact our ability to make content for the game. And so therefore, what we're going to do instead as a half-assed measure is we're going to sell it ourselves. Because we need to make money. You're right. That's what it's about. But they're not honest about it. That's what we're talking about. Is their, their honesty or their dishonesty. I hope that makes sense, man. How are you? Be good. Yeah, guys, we did hit 29 in, in all the exciting chatter about the, you know, the amazingness that is the WoW token. And how happy we are to all get along about it and for all of us to have the same opinions. How joyous that all has been. I, I did overlook the fact that we did hit 29. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What do we want to do now? We're going back over here. Yeah, we got to go five points in conviction. We really don't have any cool choices right now. We just got to get that done. Yeah, that's been great. And guys, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna stop here for the night. This seems like a really good place to stop. We we ding 29. I, I don't have like anything else I can do in this area. I'm gonna have to put a little bit of thought into what we do next. And kind of come up with a plan on where we can go from here. It's been a really good night though. I appreciate you guys coming out, especially because I know I didn't put like a lot of forethought into scheduling the stream. I didn't know if I'd be able to get on tonight. And I really appreciate you guys being here anyway, even with like really short notice. What can I do uh, It's awesome. You guys have been really great. Go with honor, friend. And we'll, we'll be on at some point tomorrow. There, there are going to be a couple of uh, videos going up tomorrow for the Tauren Warrior. So if you're interested in the more immersive recordings, if that's your jam, then we got some Tauren Warrior vids coming out tomorrow early in the morning and then probably in the afternoon for those. And then sometime in the middle of the day, if it's, if it's possible for me to do it, I will be getting on in the midday and we will have another stream. So yeah, that is the plan. Thank you guys again for being here. I truly do appreciate it. And until next time, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we'll be back here again very soon for some more exploration, fun, and excitement. See you next time.